Hey, I want to thank you all for watching our videos. Um, we try to put these videos out to be helpful, and we really appreciate thoughtful viewing and thoughtful questions. Uh, I certainly never expect anyone to accept anything that I present to them carte blanche. Uh, anything you, you have any doubts or questions about, please uh, uh, ask us, and uh, I'll do my best to, to try to uh, answer the question for you. And if you want to challenge the ideas, that's perfectly acceptable too. That's the way we learn is by interchange, by question, uh, by questioning things. And uh, in the discursive process really helps increase understanding. And it also helps eliminate misunderstanding. In the light of that, um, a viewer uh, asked in episode uh, 40, he said, if I learn to play the clarinet on poor equipment and continue to play on poor equipment, how can I develop proper playing mechanics without first buying new equipment? Well, you can't. But then how can I judge said equipment unless I first develop proper playing mechanics? Well, uh, you can't. You can't. Uh, and there the, the viewer describes really the vicious circle of bad mechanics, bad equipment, bad mechanics, bad equipment. And playing on bad equipment develops bad uh, mechanics, and bad mechanics really keeps us from being able to intelligently judge and objectively judge good equipment. It's a big problem. Uh, but there is a solution to it. Uh, the solution normally comes, normally comes, well, I shouldn't say normally comes, but if the situation comes at all for a young player, it usually comes from an excellent teacher, a teacher who really knows what they're doing. Not just someone who can assign etudes and crack down on you and make you beat your head against a practice room wall for five hours a day, uh, but a teacher who really understands that, uh, that, uh, that uh, the clarinet player not only needs to work, but work smarter, and really understands how the clarinet works, how playing mechanics really relate to acoustics, uh, and can impart that to the student. Uh, so it's incumbent on the teacher, a really good teacher, to do two things in terms of the clarinet. It's incumbent on the teacher to teach the student to play with proper mechanics. And it's also incumbent on the teacher to help the student find the equipment that is needed to facilitate playing with correct mechanics. Most teachers don't do that. Most teachers do everything but teach the clarinet. If you think about how most of your lesson time was spent or was spent when you were a student, it was spent studying everything but the clarinet. You would study the composers. You would study the history of the pieces you were playing. You would perhaps analyze those pieces. Uh, you would study um, about the lives of clarinet players. Uh, you would talk about style. You would talk about phrasing. You would talk about all those things that perhaps you could have learned from an oboist or a bassoonist or even a fine pianist, uh, but they weren't clarinet specific. The real job of the clarinet teacher is to teach clarinet specific information so that the student not only understands, say, the music and the phrasing and the history and gets some in-depth concept of what music should be like, but the student really understands how the clarinet works, how playing mechanics work, how playing mechanics relate to the phenomenon of the musical sound phrase um, and what the equipment needs to do in order faci to facilitate those correct mechanics. That's really teaching the clarinet. Assigning etudes, teaching a fingering here, teaching a fingering there, um, or a little trick here, a little trick there, those things do not amount to a pedagogy. That's a bag of tricks. That's something a conjurer pulls out. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the rabbit comes out of the hat, and sometimes, you know, a skunk comes out of the hat. You're not exactly sure. You just plug this thing in as a teacher, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Usually teachers that teach that way don't even understand the little trick that, they, that they've uh, learned to teach themselves, and they don't understand why it doesn't work when it doesn't work with the student. A really fine teacher understands the inner workings of the clarinet and inner workings of tone production and can share that with the student, and that teacher can get the student really way down the road, you know, can get the student from where they are at point A to where they need to be at point B in the straightest line possible. 
that's the kind of teacher you need to seek. One of the other things as far as assigning equipment, the teacher will say, well, uh, you need another mouthpiece. How many of us have gotten teachers that say, you know, I don't like your mouthpiece. You need to switch to my brand. This is my brand of mouthpiece, and that's what you should be playing. So you switch to that, and you may not feel comfortable with it. In fact, you may even find that it's more frustrating and difficult to play. And the teacher never really tells you why you should switch. He just says, oh, it's just better. It's better. Why? Because it's his brand? I don't think so. Teachers need to respect the intellects of students more to explain to them why it's better and what in the mouthpiece makes it better. But you know, most teachers in colleges and universities have no idea. They're simply shooting from the hip. They're simply uh, uh, going on subjective um, information or prejudicial information that they themselves don't understand. It's a sad affair. None of these things in the talented student or the student who really loves the clarinet and loves to play music, none of these things deter uh, uh, certain students and they tenaciously work on and on and on trying to push, trying to piece together a picture of the clarinet that will enable them to play better. And if you will think, most of your labors, uh, as far as the clarinet goes, are directed toward that, whether a student or whether the teacher is helping you or not. You're laboring, you're doing the very best you can to piece together the understanding of the concrete elements of the clarinet and your own playing um, to make things better. It usually starts with a better mouthpiece, but then it goes into, into um, uh, looking for better reeds, better balanced reeds, and then you need better methods for balancing reeds. And then finally, if you really develop, you come to understand that a big part of the problem may be acoustical design. And there you have to begin to look into discerning uh, how clarinets play, how they play differently, how they respond differently to the air column. And you must go through a very thoughtful and objective process to arrive uh, at the most efficient equipment for you to do the job of playing that you want to do. So um, that's a rather long answer, uh, but it begins with a competent teacher. Uh, and at the same time, if you don't have a competent teacher, it doesn't mean uh, that you can abdicate responsibility. Uh, ultimately, you have to be your own teacher. You have to search out your own answers. Um, some of us that are fortunate enough uh, have had really great teachers that have really helped us give, get those answers that we need. And once we have those answers and we learn to apply them, we find that the clarinet's easy to play. It's not hard work to play. It's fun to play. And music is a joy to make. And that's the whole goal of the process. Thank you all for watching. And please subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, um, let your friends know about our, our, uh, our videos if you think they're worthwhile. Um, ask them to come in, take a look at them, and subscribe. And uh, visit our website uh, if you get a chance. Uh, we've got some really great products on there, uh, some great educational products. My Educator's Guide to the Clarinet will give you virtually all the inside information you need about playing mechanics and equipment to really get a solid, objective picture of how things work. It's going to help you a lot. And um, in the meantime, Thanks very much again, and I'll see you next time.